Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Isaiah Kiddos. Now, kind of to recap a little bit about what we talked about last podcast, the biggest news happening around the NBA world right now is that the season has been suspended for, we're not even sure how long, because of a coronavirus outbreak. It kind of escalated throughout the couple weeks where there's been a growing concern about what's been happening with the coronavirus in terms of how quickly is it really spreading? Is you know large amount of groups dangerous to the point where the Golden State Warriors kind of got a, got this snowball rolling? They came up with the idea because of the because of San, the city of San Francisco wanted crowds less than or more than a thousand to be dispersed, not necessarily have events holding more than a thousand people. So they had planned on playing their next game against the Brooklyn Nets with no fans. Now. This kind of looked like where the rest of the league was going to go. They had a meeting around 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, something around there, um, kind of discussing about what their intentions were moving forward with the season. And then right before uh, the Thunder played their – or not Thunder, the Jazz played the Thunder, um, Rudy Gobert tested positive to have the coronavirus, meaning that an NBA player had this virus. So – Immediately, the game was suspended, and then right after that, the league as a whole was suspended. Um, all these games getting postponed, some games not even being played, like the Kings game against the Pelicans. So a lot of things happened in a very short amount of time. I um, posted, or not posted, I reported last podcast that Emmanuel Moutier was also another player that was a teammate of Rudy Gobert, also the coronavirus, that was misinformed that it was not true another player on the jazz was eventually uh ruled positive to have the coronavirus and that was donovan mitchell so that was my mistake just wanted to clear that up uh donovan mitchell was another player but it there's not only this is not only affecting basketball once basketball postponed their season that's when i did my podcast that's what the most i knew the following day it happened across the globe, not only in the NBA. It happened, you know, it, it happened in baseball. They're going to, they push back their, their spring season, but I think that's going to be pushed back even farther now. Soccer, MLS especially, they suspended all games for 30 days, I believe that, but with new information, I'm sure this can be pushed back more. Some European leagues for soccer as well, like the Premier League, there are players on Leicester City. Three of them have it, players on Chelsea that have it. Um, Mikel Arteta, coach for Arsenal, has it. So, a lot of teams in Europe as well shutting down their seasons as well as the XFL, which is really unfortunate for them because they're still trying to grow their league as a whole. So I can't see that really moving on much longer. Um, the G League's a big one. They followed suit. Um, once the NBA suspended their season, they suspended their season as well. A little more on that later. And then the big college tournaments, the D1 tournaments, March Madness is all being canceled. Um, I don't think it's being pushed back, but I have heard that there are talks that they're going to be looking to give senior athletes another chance, another year of eligibility, because it's really not fair to them that their season just gets halted and erased in a lot of ways, because this is a huge moment for a lot of college athletes. I personally was a college athlete this year, and if I didn't get to play my last season because of something like this, I honestly would be extremely devastated. So I think it's definitely of the utmost importance for the NCAA to try and figure out something for these senior athletes that can't really fulfill their last season properly. So in my opinion, that should be fixed somehow, some way. Um, but all of, all of these suspensions of their leagues of sports in general, just stopping like 
golf, tennis, literally every single sport has taken a big break, big pause. And it's all indefinite too, because this is on, this is honestly just a brand new situation, something that no one's ever really seen before. And it's honestly quite terrifying just how quickly things have escalated throughout the, the, you know, world and the U.S. in general. And just to live in a world where we don't have any sports, all I turn on Sports Center. No one's really giving any new information. It's kind of just the recycled 10 minutes of updates. And then they'll play some sports classics here and there. But that's pretty much all, you know, the sports fill you can get these days is watching reruns of old games, um, of old moments and old highlights and just recaps of past years. And we can't really see anything current. And it's really unfortunate to see. And when it happens, it really makes you start to appreciate what we did have before this. So I'll never take any sports leagues for granted at all. Um, I just wanted to point out, though, a couple a couple numbers that stuck out to me in terms of the coronavirus. The last I looked, at least 152,000, maybe more, confirmed cases of the coronavirus worldwide. Um, and at least 5,720 5, people have died. That's when I last checked the numbers. So those numbers could have increased. But in terms of the ratio between confirmed cases and people that have passed away, it seems like there's a high rate of people that make it through this disease. So I understand the, the the panic and this pandemic is huge, but I hope that some people can grab some comfort in the fact that maybe it, it won't be that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things because there's been a lot of cases where people make it through. Obviously, there are special cases in terms of older people with weaker immune systems, people with previous health issues. So the best thing to do, obviously, is to self-contain, um, stay out of large groups of people, try not to interact physically with people around you. Um, just try and limit it. Even if you don't have it, you know, you could become a carrier and to just try and stay away from the situation as a whole would be much better. But yeah, like I said before, uh, Rudy Gobert, his teammate Donovan Mitchell as well. Um, and then also Pistons forward Christian Wood. They all tested positive for coronavirus. Um, Wood was the third known NBA player to contract the virus. I'm not sure. I don't think there's anyone, anyone else as of now. But when Donovan Mitchell found out, he took to Instagram right away. He said, quote, thanks to everyone who has been reaching out since hearing the news about my positive test. We are all learning more about the seriousness of this situation. Hopefully people can continue to educate themselves and realize that they need to behave responsibly both for their own health and for the well-being of those around them. I appreciate the authorities in Oklahoma who were helpful with the testing process and everyone from the Utah Jazz who have been so supportive. I'm going to keep following the advice of our medical staff and hope that we can all come together and be there for each other and our neighbors who need our help. End quote. Now, in the middle of that paragraph, he kind of throws some shade to his teammate Rudy Gobert. He says, um, I hope we can continue to educate ourselves and realize that they need to behave responsibly both for their own health and for the well-being of those around them. It's been said that some teammates on the Utah Jazz are annoyed with Rudy Gobert's actions. Like I reported last podcast, Rudy Gobert was shown joking around um, about, you know, the coronavirus as a whole. He kind of was naive to the whole thing, a little bit ignorant with his actions. He went and touched all the recorders and the microphones that the media had laid out for him for his press conference, kind of joking about it, obviously, to allude to the fact that he's not that worried about it. Um, jazz private players are privately saying that Gobert showed a cavalier attitude toward the virus in the locker room, touching, touching teammates and their belongings. At Monday's media availability, like I just said, Gobert was seen touching all the microphones and tape recorders at the end of the session with reporters. So obviously it's not a good look for him to have done that. He did eventually come out and apologize he said quote i would like to publicly apologize to the people that i may have endangered at the time i had no idea i was even affected i was careless and make no excuse to hope my story serves as a warning causes everyone to take this seriously so i did say last podcast i'm sure he would regret it once he once he saw it i mean obviously he, he didn't have any ill intentions he wasn't trying to do anything wrong but in hindsight obviously he could have handled it a lot differently um, and he knows that now and he's making the right steps to, to right the wrong. And I'm hoping that the rest of the NBA doesn't use him as a scapegoat just to be mad at somebody because I feel like in a lot of ways players can have a lot of animosity towards him just because 
you know, he's the first case and he was careless about it. But at the end of the day, someone had to have given it to him. So it really wasn't his fault. I mean, yes, the way he acted was very childish, very um, immature, but knowing Rudy Gobert and the guy he's been in the league for the past couple of years, I feel like you got to give him some slack. He can't be, you know, he was, he made a mistake. Obviously people make mistakes and he didn't understand the severity of the situation until reality really hit him. So in my opinion, I think this is something that players are eventually going to have to let go. And hopefully, you know, it doesn't have a lasting effect on his legacy, lasting effect on his relationships with people throughout the league. Um, players, coaches that Jazz have played in the last 10 days are being told to self-isolate and quarantine like the Cavs, the Knicks, the Celtics, the Pistons, the Raptors. Um, so all these teams that they played in their previous games, obviously we don't it, – it's it said that this disease, this virus is very infectious, very contagious. So no matter – we don't really know how long Gobert's had this disease. So really he could have affected a lot of people in the time that he's played all these teams. And so it's just in their best, best interest to look out for themselves, self-quarantine just to be safe and so it's just to make sure that the right steps are taken so no one else gets hurt in the process now we're going to return with some news about Courtney Kirkland our our NBA official who was going to ref the game between the Kings and the Pelicans who had previously ref the game between Gobert's Jazz team versus the Raptors so they held him off to make sure that he was okay he got his test results, and I'll, re- I'll reveal the results for after this. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. SMC basketball podcast we just talked about how the NBA has suspended their season kind of giving a recap of the last podcast some new developments with Donovan Mitchell being tested positive as well as Christian Wood Um, those are the only three known NBA players to contract the virus as of right now Um, obviously jazz players are a little bit unhappy with Gobert and the way he's been kind of naive to just how severe this this coronavirus really is and he was kind of acting cavalier jazz teammates didn't really appreciate that gobert obviously put out an apology and is trying to be better um and so now knowing that he contracted the virus as well as donovan mitchell any team that the jazz has been in contact with has been told to self uh quarantine themselves and self isolate just keep themselves away from everyone else until they can get a positive or negative test. One of those people being Courtney Kirkland, he actually tested negative. So it was actually a nice sign to see because he did officiate the game between the Jazz and the Raptors before the game that the Jazz got postponed and all of this happened. So it was very likely, or it was not likely, but it was. there's a high chance that he could potentially have had it as well. So it's very relieving to see that he tested negative. Um, and it is... Definitely interesting just to see how when things went badly so quickly um, that they were able to get tests so quickly. They had doctors on hand. They had the tests ready as if they'd been preparing for this. So it alludes to the question, how did players get tested so quickly? And over the past week before this all happened, the league office advised teams to work with health health providers to make testing available to its players and visiting teams. Um, this is all leading up to Gobert being tested positive, obviously. And so it is important for them to have had those health officials, obviously, because it 
all, everything just went bad very quickly. So definitely important to have those tests. Hopefully at some point they'll become, you know, free. It'll be part of free healthcare for whoever wants to get the test can be able to go get the test. You don't have to be a high, you know, profile athlete. So hopefully that's in the works. But yeah, eventually the NBA released a statement saying, you know, how they had to suspend the season. It said, I'm going to read it uh, verbatim. Dear NBA fans, as you know, we have temporarily suspended our season in response to the coronavirus pandemic. We made this decision to safeguard the health and well-being of fans, players, everyone connected to our game, and the general public. This hiatus will last at least 30 days, and we intend the re- the, to resume the season if and when it becomes safe for all concerned. So it did say they would continue in 30 days. This was their immediate response. There's obviously uh, more news on that. I'll give you the bigger updates later on in the show. Um, In the meantime, we will continue to coordinate with infectious disease and public health experts along with government officials to determine safe protocols for resuming our games. As we develop the appropriate course for future NBA games and events, we will keep you informed of any changes as soon as they happen. So I'll get down to all of that and what the the new um, protocols are and what the new timeline looks like a little bit later back or later on in the podcast. But right now I just want to talk about in in this in real time, if we're learning this news, talking about how pushing the timeline back just a month really wouldn't be such a big deal um, because you would, it's not that much of a difference really just pushing back 30 days. But I think a lot of the consensus around the league kind of felt like it probably would be a lot longer than just 30 days. I mean, in comparison with the virus breakout in China, the Chinese Basketball Association suspended play in late January. Um, the CBA right now is in process of resuming play in early April. Roughly, this was a 10-week layoff. So the NBA could potentially be looking at something similar if you know matters are handled in the same type of fashion, if you know the Chinese Basketball Association can even get things up and back that quickly. It's really yet to be seen. Um, a scenario in which the remainder of the regular season schedule were played without fans also could cost the league an estimated $500 million in, um, before the playoffs could even happen. So if the season resumes at some point with fans allowed to attend, the financial losses would be eliminated or mitigated significantly. So the NBA obviously is taking a big hit right now, losing a lot of revenue. I mean, over 21% of the season had yet to be played a lot of the teams have a little bit less than 20 games to play and there are 30 teams in the nba so that's a lot of revenue from you know ticket sales from merchandise um event sales like concessions and you know stuff like that so that's a lot of revenue that affects the salary tax cap and all of that so there's a lot of things that are in play right now um that are happening around the nba (laughs) Giannis, a little you know funny moment in between all of this news, he tweeted out, if this is how my life is going to be after basketball, I'm not retiring for a long time. Hashtag 25 year career, which would be really something special. I think somebody that could actually potentially do that is LeBron James, depending on how long he really does want to play, unless he wants to just step away at some point. But him being 35 right now, 17th season, still MVP like MVP uh, conversations and such. I feel like maybe he could push it out eight more years but he'd probably be dwindling probably be you know vince carter like by the end of his his years so it's really um yet to be seen i think he's the closest guy to be able to do that though then over time over the course of the couple of couple days past um the severity of the situation kind of evolved over time adrian warjanowski um big twitter guy for nba he breaks all the biggest news most of the nba off-season news in terms of acquisitions and trades and stuff, Woj is the guy to go to. So he's very credible, very quick, and very important in the grand scheme of things in terms of getting your information. He tweeted out, CDC recommendation of no events of 50-plus people for next two months comes as a number of NBA owners and executives increasingly believe a best-case scenario is a mid-to-late June return to play with no fans. League scouting for possible arena dates all the way through August. So this is obviously going against what the league wanted initially. Obviously, they had a 30-day you know, type of suspension for the league in mind. 
But now with the CDC recommendation, no events for the next two months, it pushes back the timeline much farther. And it changes everything. I mean, when you lay it out, I saw a tweet about this. When you lay it out, mid-June is the start of NBA playoffs. Early August are the NBA finals. End of August could be the NBA draft, with September 1 being the start of free agency. September 10th could be summer and fall league. December 10th, December 10th could be training camp opens and then December 25th, regular season opens, 82 games, and then mid-June would be when the NBA season ends again. So maybe December 25th becomes the new opening day for the NBA and the run into August becomes the new normal, which could actually make a lot of sense. I mean, that's kind of where the league had talked about moving it in years past previously. So maybe this just pushes up that agenda. Um, But I think you know, changing it that drastically in terms of, you know, competition with other sports could have a ripple effect on, on how other sports operate or is really the whole calendar going to be pushed back for all sports. So there's still a lot of scenarios to be to be said, but if they end up playing this far back, um, it leaves a lot of questions to be asked. I mean, that much time off, will the team still have the same type of team chemistry, the type of rhythm, just to go jump into the playoffs even after they had just played 60 plus games and then took a huge break and then just go straight into playoffs. So I don't know how that would affect a lot of teams' morales, their rhythms, their abilities to perform at a highest level. In the one case, it could show that there would be a lot of rust uh, within the teams in terms of getting their shots back, their rhythms back, their team camaraderie back. But on the other hand, you could be giving magical star athletes a really big time off where they can just recharge and don't have to worry about the gruel of an 82 game season and they can just play to their best of their ability in a really exciting playoff picture so there's a lot of scenarios that can be played out in this situation and i think it'd be really interesting to see also there's the the idea that if this is all pushed back like it is will they allow full rosters to be able to play like people that come to mind are kevin durant or even Clay Thompson, the Golden State Warriors. Obviously, they're not in the playoff picture, but could players like those come back from injuries and play? So it's really yet to be seen. I think that the Brooklyn Nets sitting in the seventh seed with two of their biggest stars and KD and Kyrie back in could be a huge boost for that team and maybe catch a team like Toronto Raptors off guard. And I think that it could be really something special to see. A big, controversial topic to be had, I think, in my opinion. Because if you had stuck with the regular season in terms of when it was going to be played, you wouldn't have those players. So will they allow that in the future? I'm not sure. We'll continue talking about the coronavirus effect on the NBA when we return. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC. SMCpodcast.com for more info. back to the gsmc basketball podcast we just talked about you know how the nba overtime has had to respond to new information being had i mean the cdc recommendation of no events of 50 plus people for the next two months is obviously a big contrast to what the the league had in mind to begin with with 30 game with 30 day suspension of the league at least so they they hoped for only 30 days a month pushback but with this two months, it could have them all the way through August trying to find um, find venues, find time to play, and 
the whole NBA season will be pushed back as a whole. The NBA likely will provide projections on three primary scenarios. The financial cost of shutting down the season, restarting with no fans in the arena, or playing playoff games with the fans. Those losses will be reflected in next season's salary cap and the player's share of basketball-related income. So a lot of things at play right here, a lot of scenarios that need to be had, and it'll be interesting to see which, which one they go with. Obviously, the atmosphere of having fans in the game would be very important, but when will it be deemed safe, if at all, for these events? So they had to talk about playing with no fans at times. They're also talking about other scenarios as well. For now, there's a working plan that games will return without fans. The teams have been told to search out arena dates well into August for the playoffs. Teams have been directed to give the league office potential dates at smaller nearby game venues, including team practice facilities, that could spare the use of empty, cavernous arenas and possibly provide backdrops to unique television viewing lines. So I think that is huge as well. I mean, having two... Star NBA teams battled out on a practice floor would be very interesting to see. It's like NBA 2K loading screen unique because it's one thing playing in an empty arena. That is very interesting. But just playing on a practice floor, I don't necessarily see the same competitive nature within the players. I mean, yes, they probably would get into it over time, obviously, because they're professional athletes. They, they're competitive people, and they want to win. But I feel like it loses a lot of its value a lot of its zest to it when you don't have the fan element, you don't have that stadium element. If you feel like it's just a practice, that's all it's really going to be. So for them to play in practice facilities, I'm not sure that would really work. And so teams really around the league are feeling the sting of all this, not only financially, but just in general of not being able to play the sport they love and to be able to play it to their fullest ability and to its fullest potential with you want the fans and all of that. So, and not only that, there's an un, there's uncertainty of just how quickly this problem really can be solved. I mean, this is very uncharted territory in terms of the league being suspended for this. I mean, there's been NBA lockouts where players can still practice, teams can still practice, and all this and that. But having a disease like this completely halt everything with really no foreseeable future of how they're going to continue things leaves a lot of questions unanswered and leaves a lot more questions to be had. And the really the biggest fear is that they don't resume at all. And that would be absolute worst case scenario. I mean, if the the league just got cut right here, it would be really unfortunate for, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks who are having a historic season even though they slipped up in their last few games, were on a three game losing streak before this all happened. They were having a historic season. They had only lost um, nine games before this three-game losing streak and were seemingly unbeatable with Giannis playing some of his best basketball, um, following up his MVP year with another MVP year. I mean, he should be the MVP this year. There's a conversation that maybe LeBron James should have it as well because his Lakers are performing fantastic as well in their own right. I mean, they're right there in terms of record uh, next to the Milwaukee Bucks, just four less wins and two more losses but nevertheless you know that LeBron James Anthony Davis partnership is huge and in a year where you know they really felt like they had a great chance at a title LeBron could potentially be deprived of one in this scenario because he's had a great season he's remodeled his entire game in terms of being a point forward and not just you know a guy that goes out gets points gets rebounds and gets buckets for his team he now is a huge facilitator, leading the league in assists, um, adding just so many elements to his game and having a great career year. And with this being his 17th year, he's 35 years old, how much time does he really have to be playing at such an elite level? And if the season just ends right now, I think it'd be really unfair for him. Another team is the Los Angeles Clippers. You know, they just got really good, just got their acquisitions in Kawhi Leonard and, and Paul George. And they've taken that leap from, you know, a pretty decent team in the west to a really great team in the west that could you know make it really far in the playoffs there's obviously a lot more teams as well dallas mavericks making a lot of noise uh the thunder super surprising rockets going small ball on the other side the miami heat having a fantastic year the raptors somehow following up a great year losing Kawhi anyway the boston celtics will get just that much better this could be best case scenario for the brooklyn nets for the teams like the 76ers who 
both are playing without superstars. Who knows if Ben Simmons will have even returned. He was having back problems for the last bit of the season, and he was unsure if he was going to get surgery. He was unsure if he was going to play the rest of the season. And so playing without him would have hurt them tremendously in the playoffs. And the Brooklyn Nets, obviously, everyone knows the story. KD has been out all year. Kyrie has been out for most of the year. So that probably could be a really tough scenario or better scenario for them uh, for the season to be canceled and then just get a fresh slate next season. But as a whole, I think the competitive nature of the NBA, no one would want that. It would just be a lost, a lost season for no reason. Um, and it would be really unfortunate for a lot of players. But not only this, there's a lot of other things that this affects. I mean, because of the pushback timeline, there won't be any of the best players in the Olympics if the season continues because they'll be playing in in the NBA, obviously. So a lot of players aren't going to leave uh, their NBA teams to go play in the Olympics. So it's really tough uh, for the injured players that were going to use the Olympics as a warm-up into the season. Players that come to mind are Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson. I mean, both of them missed the majority of this season, and I know for a fact they both had the idea of going to play in uh, in Tokyo to kind of get their rhythm back, get their mojo back before starting the next season, especially Clay Thompson, who hasn't played at all this season. Um, for others, you know, in the league, they would be their first time representing their country, our country, so it would be really unfortunate for them not to be able to don, you know, the USA colors in the Olympics just because of this NBA season getting pushed back. So this you know, as restricts a lot of things for the players. Um, and there's more restrictions for the players as well during this whole, whole crisis. I mean, in terms of travel, um, a lot of NBA owners, NBA teams, uh, and the NBA just in general would rather their players didn't leave their self quarantined areas. They wish they would just stay in their, in their regions or whatever. Um, they are allowed to leave, they are allowed to travel and go where where they please, but they have to be 100% transparent with where they are, have to give constant updates about where they are, so they have to check in a lot. Basically, the NBA and the organizations are <laughs> these players' parents as of right now. Um, players that were told to self-quarantine for a couple weeks, um, players that were in contact with the Utah Jazz at any point, they have to have um, a full medical leave that, you know, they're cleared, they're 100% okay and not don't have the coronavirus before they can actually leave. Um, they're obviously not allowed to travel outside of North America just because of all the travel bans that US, the U.S. has impl- implemented and also you know, countries overseas are completely shut down right now. So obviously they're not allowed to leave North America. There is a rule right now that well, is indefinite right now, not sure when it's going to be lifted, but there are no team practices allowed. Um, individuals are allowed to practice. One player um, noted that has practiced by himself is Lonzo Ball. Um, but they would prefer that one p- uh, player per court with a consistent coach to kind of stop all the intermingling and more interaction. The less interaction is the better is kind of the thought process here. So each player is kind of assigned a coach to um, be working with in, in the future. Um, they want only one person per court. They want one in weights at, at a time. And anyone that enters into the gym does a temperature check to make sure that they're not bringing in any illnesses. So there's a lot of precaution in terms of the way they're navigating through this process. And it, it makes sense just because obviously you don't really know how quickly you can infect another person. You want to stop all the interactions that you generally have within the team and have as minimal amount of people in one area as possible just so that the spread of this disease doesn't um, accelerate and it doesn't you know postpone any more timelines for the NBA in terms of them coming back into the season. Um, there's also been a lot of uh, effects on the G League as well and some player responses to just you know what they want to see from the people. So we'll give you the, that information coming up next. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Isaiah Kiddos. Now, we've been talking about the coronavirus and its effect that it's had on the NBA. Uh, most recently, talking about you know the, a lot of restrictions that the players are having to deal with in terms of how, when they can travel, uh, where they can travel, um, in terms of when this timeline is going to be you know resumed for the NBA, if at all. Um, it's looking like there could be dates, you know, past August for the NBA to happen. Um, kind of just completely halting the whole season and just moving when it generally is played. And this could mean a lot of different things in different scenarios. So there's a lot of questions in the air right now about how this, they're going to proceed, proceed. And it's interesting to see, you know, what kind of implications it'll have on, on the NBA in terms of its competitiveness. Is it going to have fans in part of it? Are they going to go right into playoffs? Are they going to allow injured players that probably wouldn't have played previously to play now because they'll probably be healthy by that time? Um, also, just the restrictions in terms of their practices. They just want one person per court. And a consistent coach so there's not too much intermingling between the teams and the staff. Um, just kind of stop all the social gatherings just to limit the acceleration of the virus spreading. So... Good precautions in terms of that. Um, the G League also has been affected affected as well. Um, the G League is expected to be completely canceled. They're going to cancel the season. They've played their last games. Um, the players are going to be paid for the rest of their season, so no doubts about that. But just you know, the stress that it, it will take to put the season back on play for the NBA level. Um, they don't want the added stress of having to deal with the G League as well. So they're probably taking a big financial hit and just need to end the G League now and then figure out in the future when it will start up again. But for now, their season is officially canceled. Hopefully that doesn't happen to the NBA. Um, I also want to say that not only are NBA events, sporting events being being closed down, but also – in Los Angeles, the executive order of mayor of Los Angeles um, also made the following establishments that are closed to the public. Um, bars and nightclubs are being closed, dine-in restaurants, entertainment venues, gyms and fitness studios. This is effective March 16th um, at midnight. And so it's just kind of accelerating this this idea that maybe we might be on a national lockdown pretty soon here. Um, just because of how quickly things have accelerated in terms of kind of the fear of this virus spreading to the mass population. So not only are sporting events being affected, just everyday life as well. And it's, it's, it's honestly scary to see some of the NBA players share their thoughts about, you know, what they can do best. And so take a listen. What's up, everybody? Uh, I know this time is pretty hectic and crazy, and there's a lot of uncertainty, you know, out there. But uh, just want to take the time to encourage everybody to practice social distancing to the best of their abilities. I know, um, you know, people are in a lot of different situations and a lot of demands, you know, from person to person. But as best we can, practice social distancing so we can get rid of the spread of this virus as soon as possible. Flatten the curve. Make sure you stay six feet away from people. Wash your hands when you're going inside, outside as much as you can. Water and soap. And uh, we can all come together collectively to stop the spread of this virus. So 
Everybody do their part. I'm doing mine. I'm at home. Me and my family really enjoying family time. Um, but as best you can, social distance yourself. And uh, we can flatten the curve and get rid of this virus as soon as possible. Appreciate it. Stop the spread. Let's do it. What's up, everyone? It's Dame Lillard of the Portland Trailblazers. Just a reminder to make sure you guys wash your hands, avoid large crowds, and if you might be sick, to quarantine yourself. Um, this is only a virus that we can beat together. Um, hopefully, we'll be seeing you guys soon and back on the floor. Say see ya. See ya. What's up, everybody? This is Victor Oladipo of the Indiana Pacers. Um, just want to encourage everybody to continue to be great citizens. Please wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. Please just protect yourselves um, and the people around you. Obviously, we know it's a tough time right now, um, but let's work together to continue to get rid of this disease. Um, NBA fans, we miss you. Can't wait to play in front of you guys again. Peace and love. Hey, this is Jason Tatum from the Boston Celtics. Um, I just wanted to say during, these, during this time, you know, we should all be looking out for one another and staying calm and staying safe. Um, you know, by taking steps like washing your hands on a regular, staying out of large crowds, you know, if you're coughing or sneezing, you know, covering your mouth, uh, you know, because these are tough times, but, you know, we will get through them together, you know, with prayer. And uh, I just want to say we, we love our, our NBA fans and uh, we'll be out there soon. Thank you. What's up, guys? And as you know, uh, I have to be home for 14 days. So for the next 14 days, I can't go out. At the meantime, I have to stay in shape. So I made my little gym here at my place, like you, like you can see. I got my box here, the bike, and the bands, little weight here, like you can see. You know, that's all I need, man. I'll see you when I'm out. NBA players are not only giving their advice on terms of how to stay safe, how to stay healthy, and how to stay, you know, high high hygienic in terms of you know washing your hands and all that they're also trying to help out um, with their part-time workers there's a lot of questions around that mark cuban was the first one in a press conference to say that he would like to do something for his part-time workers and so there's been a lot of you know response from players from the teams and just the nba as as a whole and they did a really great job about doing so um, in los angeles the nba's lakers and clippers even along with the NHL's Kings uh, of, and Staples Center, they said they would create a fund to alleviate the strain on more than 2,800 hourly staff members, employees, who depend on working the several games and concerts held at Staples Center. Um, the Lakers, Clippers, and Kings are tenants of Staples Center, obviously, which is owned and operated by AEG. AEG has 27% ownership stake in the Lakers and 50% stake in the Kings. On Friday, Staples Center donated 7,000 pounds of food that would have gone to waste to the Midnight Mission and Los Angeles Mission Men's Center in downtown Los Angeles. So all, um, also doing great things in terms of trying to trying to feed people in this in this time of crisis where, you know, you're not really sure what kind of effect it's going to have. People that are spending money on shopping and saving up just to be safe, you know, and you're not sure what it effects it could have on the supermarkets in terms of that. So I thought that was a really good touch as well. In Chicago, the NBA's Bulls um, and the United Center said they would pay about 1,200 day of game staff through the end of season as if they're originally scheduled, which I thought is good as well. Um, those those people rely on a paycheck uh, every month, and I don't think rent is just going to stop just because – you know, life ha seems to have stopped in terms of a lot of occupations being um, canceled, being postponed, um, and people just trying to figure out, you know, where their next check is going to come from. So I think it's good of, you know, these NBA teams to do so. In Denver, the owners of the Nuggets and Colorado Avalanche said they will continue to pay their part-time and hourly event staff for the next 30 days. Um, I think with the new information, they might extend that out just a little bit. Um, earlier this week, the Milwaukee Bucks said they would match star Giannis Tentacumpo's $100,000 donation to Fiserv Forum staff. Um, those don donations followed a similar pledge from Cleveland Cavaliers forward Kevin Love that sparked other players to contribute as well. 
Um, there are a lot of other teams that have helped out. Like I just said, Kevin Love pledged a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars to arena workers. Um, he kind of kicked off this whole support drive, um, to the aid workers affected by the league suspension. And he said, quote, my hope is that others will step up. And that's exactly what happened. Giannis said in the quote, it's bigger than basketball. And during this tough time, I want to help the people that make my life, my family's life and my teammates' lives easier. That's a huge, huge pay of respect from Giannis Tentacumpo. Um, the Cavaliers also announced that they will pay their arena staff, staff as if the regular season games happen. Amazing gesture from them following Kevin Love's, you know, kind of kickstart to everyone doing this. Um, the Golden State Warriors, they said in an effort to assist those impacted by the NBA's unforeseen suspension in play, the Warriors ownership players and coaches have pledged to donate $1 million to a disaster relief fund established by the Warriors Community Foundation. The fund will provide assistance to employees who work games at Chase Center who are, who are adversely impacted by the loss of games. The Warriors employ more than 1,000 part-time employees who work in various functions of each at each game, including food service, security, guest services, custodial, and more. The NBA announced on March 11th that the 2019-2020 season would be suspended until further notice due to the coronavirus pandemic. And at the time, suspension of the Warriors had seven games remaining at Chase Center. Stephen Curry said this. He said, quote, The last few days have been extreme... Oh, sorry, this is Joe Lacob. The last few days have been extremely challenging for all Bay Area citizens as we deal with the hourly changes in this unprecedented situation. Our players, coaches, ownership, and management have been focused on creating a way to assist our part-time employees. We are addressing the potential hardships these hardworking individuals may encounter during this hiatus in the NBA season. While everyone in every business is impacted, those who are fortunate enough to be in this position to help need to help. Uh, Stephen Curry also added, the men and women who work our games at Chase Center are critical in providing an incredible game night experience for our fans. We wanted to do something along with the, our ownership and coaches to help ease the pain during this time. So Stephen Curry, another big name, you know, trying to make a difference. He also did something in his own right with his wife, Aisha Curry. We show you what he did coming up next. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. about how a lot of the stars, a lot of the ownerships of, of the teams in the NBA are kind of stepping up um, and just responding to this unforeseen um, circumstances of the NBA season being postponed because there's a lot of people that rely on working games, um, hourly employees that because they're not working games now, they don't know where their next paycheck is going to come from. A lot of their income comes from working these games and so a lot of owners in terms of the organizations are stepping up to donate some money along with some star players on the team. And a lot, most of the league really is, is taking notice. Mark Cuban was the first one to say in, in an interview that he wanted to put something in play. Kevin Love was the ber first big star donating $100,000. Said he's kind of hoping to, you know, kickstart this, this campaign of helping out hourly employees. So Stephen Curry is also another person as well. Um, he teamed up with his wife, Aisha Curry, for a special project. So this is him and her talking right now. 
The world is changing before our eyes in terms of dealing with you know the spread of coronavirus, and uh, we just found out that the Oakland Unified School District is closing their doors for the foreseeable future. So uh, we want to intercede on behalf of the kids that rely on you know their daily services uh, and try to help uh, any way we can. Yeah, the statistics are really staggering. Eighteen thousand kids rely on at least two meals a day from. Um, the school system, and so we want to make sure that we rally around everyone and ensure that these kids are not wondering where their next meal is coming from, and that the parents who, you know, some are still having to go to work, worrying about the kids' logistics. We just want to make sure there's one less thing to worry about, um, and so we're asking you to rally with us. Uh, we're working with the Alameda Food uh, Food Bank and the Oakland Unified School District to make sure that kids are getting their meals. So we're trying to do our part. Hopefully, you can join fight with us um, and have each other's backs as we go through this uh, uncertain time uh, in our community. Thanks, guys. Now, I'm now Stephen Curry, he's a star in the NBA. He's a veteran. He's been in the NBA for quite some time now. Joined in 2009, I believe, it was his NBA draft year. So he knows how all this works. He knows to when to help out with his community. Obviously, with a, a global pandemic like this, this is a great time for you to do so. Someone that's very young, an upcoming star in the league, is already kind of learning how to be, you know, contributor in terms of his community. Zion Williamson as well from the New Orleans Pelicans. Before anything from the team came out, he himself said, I am pledging to cover the salaries for all those Smoothie King Center workers for the next 30 days. This is a 19-year-old kid, superstar phenom, just getting, you know, his first taste of the NBA. And he's already putting himself out there, putting most of his salary towards helping out the hourly workers, which I think is just great and great. And it just shows the great leadership within the NBA in terms of teaching their stars how to be great people in their communities and just using their platform, you know, for something bigger than themselves. Um, They all kind of got a special nod from former President Barack Obama. They said a shout out to Kevin, Giannis, Zion, Blake Griffin, Stephen Curry, and all the other players, owners, and organizations who are setting a good example during a challenging time. This is a tweet from Obama. He also said a reminder that we're a community and that each of us has an obligation to look out for each other, Obama added. So I thought that was a really cool nod from the former president. He always kind of seemed to know when to say the right things, and I think it was definitely important for someone to acknowledge what these players are doing. And I think it is uh, very nice to see them step up in such a uncertain time. They also add some uh, humor as well. They're all very funny on social media in terms of their interactions. Spencer Dinwiddie tweeted recently, said, any NBA players going to YouTube to watch their own highlights due to withdrawals? Players like Stephen Curry replied saying at least twice a day. Uh, Trey Young quote tweeted it saying, watching my high school highlights now, only to realize it was just three years ago, which is insane to think about because he's just lighting up the NBA as of right now. Um, Bradley Beal also saying that, you know, you can't lie, he's he's too nice, all this and that. So it's cool to see uh, the NBA players trying to find some sort of, you know, humor in all of this, you know, it's a great way to heal, great way to move forward. And I think it is pretty funny that even NBA stars look at their own highlights because, you know, the vast majority of NBA fans will look up highlights and, you know, debate players who's the best, this and that, which I think is cool that NBA players also do so as well. Um, another big tweet coming from an NBA player was Jaron Jacks Jr. He tweeted out Jim, dot, 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 film, dot, 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 the stew, meaning the studio, bed, then repeat. Like this is his cycle now that the NBA – is not a thing. And so him saying that he's in the studio, Josh Hart felt inclined to quote tweet this saying, I'm hopping on a track. We calling it eighth seed. Best verse gets the eighth seed. Kind of challenging him to a rap battle, which is not something that is uncommon in the NBA. We've seen a lot of players, you know, try and also have another career in terms of rapping as uh, alongside with their NBA career. So my question is, Josh Hart is on the Pelicans, so he's challenging for the eighth seed with Jaron Jack Jr., who's on the Grizzlies, currently in the eighth seed. So my question would be, would Damian Lillard get into that too, with Portland being in the mix in terms of getting into the playoffs as well? I mean, they're right there in that same mix. They're the team directly below the Grizzlies right now. And so Damian Lillard, I think, is kind of, you know, kind of the only 
real NBA star with some some clout in terms of their their rap game. I mean, he's kind of the 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 leader in terms of players in the league. I mean, the unspoken king, if you if you will. And so I think he would kind of have something to say about that. Josh Hart also has Lonzo Ball on his team who also dabbles in rapping as well. Maybe Marvin Bagley too, who's another player that had a rap battle with Damian Lillard not too long ago. Um, he's on the Kings. They're in the mix too. So if this was an actual thing, I think it would be really entertaining. Obviously, this wouldn't be um, real. This would just be for fun. But I think it would be really interesting to see and something that could be very entertaining for them to potentially stream together, um, potentially just put out rap battles and have fans vote who won. Just to show some type of entertainment during this time when there's no sports. So I think that would be really interesting. Um, and it also raises the question, what happens when they get back? Do they keep the regular seating that they have right now and go straight into playoffs? Because I really hope not. I mean, if you look back at, at this playoff race, Memphis Grizzlies was holding on to the eighth seed, and they're three and a half games up on the Blazers, the Pelicans, and the Kings. The Spurs are kind of floating around that same area. They're four games back right now. So who really knows how this season would have uh, turned out if they were able to play the rest of their games. I think it really would have been interesting to see, really would have been fun to watch, um, because I don't know if the Grizzlies would have held on to the AC. So I really hope that the, when the season picks back up, they will continue to play it because teams like the Kings were playing pretty well at, at the time. They had lost their most recent game, but they were playing really well since All-Star break. Um, the Pelicans got even more exciting when Zion joined the team. They were kind of up and down, but trying to find a groove. And then the Blazers obviously just got Damian Lillard back. Now that the season's suspended, they have Nurkic back. So could be some big boost for them. So I just think it would be really fun to watch to see how the rest of the season would have unfolded. Well, the Phoenix Suns doesn't want to wait for that decision to come. Instead, they're actually going to be playing out the rest of their season on NBA 2K. They tweeted out saying that it's not over yet and they want to start virtually playing the rest of their season on 2K. Um, they streamed their most recent game that was on the schedule against the Dallas Mavericks and it didn't necessarily go according to plan for the Suns. Lucas scored 50 points and had 19 ass assists to beat the Suns 150-136. Representing the Suns in terms of playing as them was Antonio Universal Phenom Saldivar, I hope I said that correctly, he plays in the NBA 2K League for the Memphis Grizzlies affiliate um, Grizz Gaming. So I really think it's a cool way to get your sports feel. I mean, I did see a Twitter video, I think it's, this was a joke, but they were placing bets on simulated games from 2K, so got to try and watch basketball some way you can. I think, you know, simulations have always been kind of Something you do before big finals, like uh, esports pages will simulate the Super Bowl before it happens or the World Cup final before it happens or anything of that nature. So I think this is a really cool alternative to try and get your sports fill. Um, the stream consistently had 4,500 to 5,000 viewers in that range at one point, um, but at one point had 12,000, which is a pretty big number usually in terms of what they typically see. Um, on average, um, for the 2K League, they have 6,900 generally um, from game to game, but they do have a huge spike to 21,500 for the finals of the 2K League. So not a, not a bad number for just a random, you know, Phoenix Suns just stream real quick to try and show the rest of their season. So this also this partnership with gaming also has been very apparent as well. A lot of the NBA players have switched to gaming. I mean, because their NBA season is being halted, they kind of go into that virtual world. They Players like Ben Simmons, Carl uh, Anthony Towns, De'Aaron Fox, Jason Tatum, Gordon Hayward, Embiid, Luka, Giannis, etc. Et There's a lot of players in the NBA who, when they're not playing basketball, they'll be playing games like Fortnite, like Call of Duty, and stuff like that to kind of get their mind off the game, and so now that's kind of what they're all turning to. And I think it's a good escape and a good alternative for them in this time. Um, we're going to come back and wrap up the show with just how the NBA playoffs would turn out right now if they were to happen with the season just ending. 
and picking up from the playoffs when they finally return. So stay with us. Are you looking to get your college football fix? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. We just talked about how NBA season has obviously been suspended, so a lot of NBA stars have taken a Twitter to kind of interact, kind of, you know, share their thoughts on, on you know, ways to be healthier and kind of kind of stay away from being contagious, from being infected. Um, also, you know, having fun as well, talking about rap battles like jo- Josh Hart and Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, also, the Phoenix Suns streaming the rest of their season, which I think is a really cool alternative. Um, that whole partnership between gaming and the NBA um, just seems to be growing, in my opinion. And the gaming esports world as a whole is just getting bigger. So to have a kind of partnership with the NBA during this time where they could simulate the rest of the games as of right now might be a good idea for them um, just to get some sort of revenue going and just some viewership going for people that can't watch any sports right now. I mean, every single sports is canceled. So esports and simulations could be a cool alternative just to to watch. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to be that interested in watching um, video games, but if they're real life situations of the rest of the season, it might be an interesting filler for now instead of just recycling old, old games. But moving forward, we talked about if this season ended today and or it ended and when it came back it would just go straight into playoffs this tournament would already be set up and the nba finals already be set up in terms of you know the placements which would be unfortunate because like we talked about there's a lot of teams that could fight for that eighth seed with the grizzlies blazers pelicans kings and spurs but if we just return to how it ended and just went straight into the playoffs this is how it would look in the first round, we're going to do the east side first. In the first round, it would be the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Orlando Magic. Now, the Orlando Magic obviously hasn't been a great team for most of the year. They would be getting Jonathan Isaac back, which would be a huge help, a big cornerstone for their organization. But I'm not even going to go deep into this because they have no chance against the Milwaukee Bucks in a seven-game series. Milwaukee Bucks would have their full squad back, a very well-rested Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was already in MVP form. Obviously, with a huge layoff in terms of playing, he might have lost some of that rhythm, but that dominance just doesn't go away. And so in my opinion, I think the Milwaukee Bucks would completely demolish the Orlando Magic in the first round, so they would move on. Toronto Raptors in second place would go against the Brooklyn Nets in seventh, so... I think this one could be really interesting depending on the timeline of when this could ma- this matchup could potentially happen because if it gets pushed back far enough, the Brooklyn Nets could potentially have Kevin Durant, who's been out all year with an Achilles injury, and Kyrie Irving, which would make a huge dynamic and game changer in this matchup. The seventh seed Brooklyn Nets all of a sudden are playing like a two seed in the Eastern Conference. Kevin Durant, one of the best players in the world, him being out for a whole year though, not sure how he would react that quickly to the speed of play, the competition level, and if he would be the same player he was before his injury. Kyrie Irving as well, ever since he um, disbanded with Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, he's been suspect to me, and I don't know if I would trust him in a playoff scenario. And the Raptors just have that championship uh, pedigree to them, and that confidence as well, that playoff confidence. So I think for me, I think the Toronto Raptors win this one. They they move on. They've been very consistent all year, and they just have that championship mentality to help them move forward. The Boston Celtics would match against the 76ers, and Sixers had won mostly uh, during the regular season matchups. Um, but, but like I said, the 76ers 
they just don't have a lot of offensive identity to them. Um, if the timeline gets pushed back, they might have Ben Simmons back. Joel Embiid had just came back and had a huge performance in his first game. Um, so he didn't miss a beat, obviously. So I think the 76ers could potentially have the Celtics number. But with the added time off, with everyone healthy and a full Boston Celtics squad, I think they're just too deep and just too good for the Sixers to try and beat. And so I really think the Celtics would move on. They just have too much uh, star power. They actually have a team identity and a, and a true star that they go to, and that's Jason Tatum. So I think the Celtics move on in that scenario, but it would be a close contest between them and the Sixers. And then the Heat are in number four right now, up against the Pacers, and I think this would be the Heat no problem. The Pacers, for me, have been a dark horse team. They've been playing pretty well this season so far, have a decent record home and away. But the Miami Heat would have home court advantage, and they're one of the best teams on their home court. They're 27-5. and five. So in my opinion, their depth would really show in this game. Um, the acquisitions of Andre Iguodala and Jay Crowder, and in, in, in addition to Goran Dragic coming off the bench, and your leader being Jimmy Butler, just his grit and his competitiveness with new players like Nunn and Hero, I think they have a lot of potential to fulfill. And in my opinion, I think the Heat win this this battle, no problem. I think they win it in a sweep. And so this would mean that the next round would be the Bucks versus the Heat. And people are going to call me crazy, but I actually am going to go with the Miami Heat. And the reason why is because I think in the playoff picture, it, it's a different level of competition. Um, and even though the Bucks are one of the best teams offensively, they strive a lot in their open court offense. And even when they're in half court offense, I feel like Giannis kind of struggles a little bit and he won't have a second star to, to allude to sometimes to, to alleviate the pressure off of him. And I don't think Middleton will rise to the occasion. I think Miami will show their grit, their physicality against the Bucks and show that depth is definitely more important than just one star in Giannis Tentacumpo. And so in my opinion, they go down early and it kind of sets off a chain reaction in terms of the off season, but we'll get to that in another podcast. So yeah, I have the Heat upsetting the Bucks, and then the Raptors versus Celtics. I have the Celtics winning this one as well. A lot of the same type of arguments I made before. The Celtics are just deeper. They have a true star in Jason Tatum, and the Raptors in their own right. They have a star in Pascal Siakam as well. But for me, I think the Celtics just have a little bit more talent on paper. I really like Kemba Walker's game. Um, Gordon Hayward was playing great this season, especially towards the back end, really just coming into his own. Marcus Smart off the bench is invaluable. Jalen Brown is reaching new heights. And even though the Toronto Raptors team have that championship pedigree, have a lot of experience and a lot of good players, I just don't think in a seven-game series they would be able to outlast the young and hungry Boston Celtics. Just I just don't think they would be able to. So it would be the Celtics versus the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. And for me, I'm going to go with the Boston Celtics. Same kind of reason. Um, just that extra added star power to them. The Miami Heat are really deep. They're a great team. Um, but I think the Celtics' strong f- four core is just a little bit better than the whole squad that the Heat have assembled in terms of their depth. I think that four star power can be enough to to outlast the depth that, that Miami Heat have. Plus, the Celtics would have home court advantage. And the Heat are 14-19 and 19 on the road. So I feel like it would be tough for them uh, to beat the Boston Celtics at the Garden for four games. Or for, yeah, for four games, three games, two games, whatever it may be. So for me, Boston Celtics go to the NBA Finals. Now switching over to the other side in the West, the Lakers number one versus the Grizzlies. This really is no no competition in my mind. I mean, the Grizzlies would have Jaron Jackson Jr. back, but even though they've made a lot of strides, they still have a long way to go. And up against a team that's led by LeBron and Anthony Davis, they have no chance. LA wins this one easily. Clippers versus the Mavericks, same type of situation. The Mavericks would have, you know, a lot of their players healthy. Um, Luka had a lot of nagging injuries. And Luka and Porzingis are a great pairing. They're a great team, but I think they hurt a lot without having having Powell. Um, I don't think Boban can put up the numbers he did um, like he did on the last night of the NBA season. Um, 
So yeah, I think the Clippers just have way too much depth. They'll they'll win that game pretty or that series pretty easily. Nuggets versus the Rockets, three and three and six. Um, for me, Houston Rockets win. I think the Nuggets would probably fold um, in the playoffs. Generally, like they do, they do have a lot of team camaraderie. They're a great. Uh, they play great team basketball, but the star power of Russell Westbrook and James Harden will propel the Rockets through the first round at the very least. And I think they would torch the Nuggets in a seven-game series, but it would take about six to do so. And then the last m- matchup would be the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I would go with the Thunder just because they have a little bit more experience to them and they can grind out games a little bit more. The Utah Jazz do have, you know, have had a pretty good season, but it's been up and down a lot of the way, haven't been able to grind out those victories a lot of the times. And the Thunder are just relentless, and they're led by Chris Paul, who operates an offense not quite anyone else I've seen in the NBA, at least not in recent years. So I think the Oklahoma City Thunder would beat the Jazz in that first-round matchup. So moving forward, that would mean the Lakers play the Thunder. And even though you know all those things I said about the Thunder are true— in terms of their ability to close out games and fight back late in games, led by Chris Paul, they would not have enough star power to compete with, you know, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kuzma, KCP. Um, you got Avery Bradley. The Lakers just have too much depth to them, I think, to be able to compete with uh, the Lakers. So I feel like the Thunder would fall off. So the Lakers move on to the Western Conference Finals. So then on the other side, you have Clippers versus Rockets. I feel like that would be an absolute um, shooting match, in my opinion. But we saw what happened the last time these two teams played. Clippers completely dismantled them in their small ball. So I think something very similar would happen. The Clippers just have so much depth to them, and they can match up really well against a small lineup. And in a seven-game series, I just don't see you know the Rockets beating them four times. They're just too good. So it would mean the Clippers versus the Lakers – in the Western Conference Finals, and I'm going with the Clippers because of what I've said in podcast past. They just have too much depth. Kawhi Leonard is a different animal in the playoffs. Paul George, I think, hasn't reached his full potential in the playoffs just because of his supporting cast in years past. Him being at the Pacers didn't really set him up well for the playoffs. Um, Him being with Russell Westbrook, I think, didn't really set him well to be in the playoffs. And so I think him being with Kawhi Leonard... It's a great situation, so I think those two will play really well. Lou Williams and Montrezl Harrell coming off the bench. Um, you got Patrick Beverly playing defense on, you know, Rajon Rondo. That would be a great matchup for the Lakers. Um, but I think that the Clippers just have more depth. Are added Mark, Marcus Morris as well. Uh, Reggie Jackson coming off the bench. I think they just have a little bit more depth to outlast the Lakers. Um, and the Lakers are going to have to rely way too much on LeBron James. And Anthony Davis could definitely be a monster, but I feel like he could be limited um, with, you know, different looks from Kawhi Leonard, Montrezl Harrell, and Zubak as well. So I think the Clippers would end up winning this one. So the final for me would be the Los Angeles Clippers versus the Boston Celtics. And so if the season picks up and goes right into the playoffs, your NBA Finals champion will be the Los Angeles Clippers. And I think a lot of teams have seen it, uh, seen it as a possibility since they made the acquisition of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard this last off season. And that's what's really going to push them over the edge. And as much as I like the Boston Celtics, um, they're still pretty young and they, I think this, they could get to the finals for sure, but they won't win it right away because they still have a lot to learn. And I think a Kawhi Leonard led team against a young Boston Celtics team that's still you know, young in their progression. I think this is where they hit their halt, and Boston Celtics will be good for the next years to come, but this isn't their time. Right now, it's the Los Angeles Clippers and Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, and I just think that they're the best suited team to win the NBA Finals. If this is how it plays out, if it goes straight into playoffs when we get when when we return. So, obviously, this is all speculation. We'll, we'll see what happens in the next uh, couple weeks. Um, in the next couple of days, you know, in terms of what new updates we have about the effects of what the coronavirus is doing to the league. So that we're going to end it here. Thank you for listening to the GSMC basketball podcast brought to you by the GSMC podcast network. I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review because that really helps us out. 
Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I would greatly appreciate that. I'm Jose Quiroz. Thank you all. See you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.